Hi, this is Adams, and this is where I take some of my favorite pots from Edmund DeWall's The Pot Book, which is located in the Brooklyn Clay Library, uh, and it's free to peruse if you want to, and try to figure out how I would make it if I were going to make it. Uh, and so this is the cover of it, just for reference. This is the general layout, got good imagery on here, a little bit of words, and some uh, important information. This is Edmund DeWall. He's an artist, he's a writer, he's a scholar. So I'll look him up if that's intriguing. And so for this segment, I'm going to be looking at Marguerite Hill Wildenhain's vase from 1929. She, at this point in her life, was a student at the Bauhaus in the early 1900s, and they were very influential in modernism, even though they were very short-lived, uh, very influential. And she was drawing from her industrial design background to make this face. Uh, she did make this herself. She was a potter all of her life. Uh, in 1940, she left Germany because of the conflict, the wars, and moved to Northern California, where she started an artist retreat colony uh, and was a, had a very profound influence in that area and lived a long, great life. Uh, look her up. There's a lot of really interesting videos online. But this is a very kind of rigid vase. You can see it's very modernist and very minimal and kind of elegant in its just uh, very uh, basic form. And so this is Marguerite. And it looks like in California, she's a little older in their picture. So what we're going to be talking about for this is working in pieces, collaring, throwing large, and lustering. And you can see a couple different variations here. You could, if you want to, and with enough practice, to make this all in one piece, especially depending on what scale you're going for. If you're going for more of this scale, easily one piece, this would be a lot harder. You could definitely do it. People do it all the time. Uh, it definitely takes practice, but it definitely takes a toll on your body. And what I find, because I don't want that to happen for me, what I find works really well is to make make uh, larger works in sections and then put them together after they're all trimmed up. And so what I would do is usually what I do break them up and throw them separately. So if you really want to, you could throw this in one piece, throw this in one piece, and even throw the foot in one piece. But probably what would make a little more sense is to throw this with the foot in one piece and then the top neck part uh, in a separate piece. And then once they're trimmed uh, and in a nice kind of leather hard state that you can handle them without denting them or uh, distorting them too much, you could then score them and with a little slip stick them together and they should fire just nicely. Um, and so... I think to make this, I would get, you know, 15, 20 pounds, depending on what scale you're doing. Try to throw as like as tall of a cylinder as I want, uh, as I can rather, and trying to get as much clay from the bottom to the top. And then once I get, uh, get it so I can't really get it any higher, you don't want to overwork the clay because then it'll start to work against you too, and is to then push out this part but also use this technique called collaring, look it up, C-O-L-L-A-R-I-N-G, and that's bringing the clay evenly inwards toward the center, and so making this little part that would fit on the neck. Uh, you can also do that on the bottom too. Uh, a nice little trick that I've learned along the ways is when making this kind of form, I can never really get enough clay away from the bottom even though I'm going to trim this kind of foot, but even like right here, it's always a little thicker than I really want it to. What I find works really well is leaving it on the bat after you throw it, giving it a couple hours to dry, just in that very first kind of stage where it's trimmable. Uh, don't take it away from the bat, but you can trim the bottom to kind of bring out the kind of elegance of the form a little bit before you take it off the bat and then trim and kind of form your um, foot that's on there. And so the collaring is the bringing in part, and also you can kind of do it a little bit. Um, it's more just kind of compressing the bottom inwards. And so I bring this out, you know, it's their little flared lip on the top. Uh, you can use your calipers 
to kind of uh, measure the the fitting to make sure it looks good, basically. Uh, if you don't have that, you can always use a ruler. If you're a real kind of designer or design oriented person, really kind of rigid standards, you can really kind of deconstruct this whole photograph, take measurements, and then apply it to what you're working with. Uh, or you could just eyeball it if you have a little more um, lax kind of um, standards, I guess. And with everything that I'm showing, I really emphasize don't just try to do this in one shot. Give yourself three or four times. Um, so make, you know, if, if you have the energy to make like three versions of this body, make three versions of this top and fit them all together, there's always going to be the one that stands out that's really the best, and it's usually the third or fourth. So always kind of do that. Um, the last thing I'll talk about is you see this is another variation that was uh, originally made by Marguerite. And you notice the gold on there. And so gold luster is really interesting in that, it's, as I understand it, go like gold powder uh, in this real gross toxic medium that goes on over glaze. And so over glaze application, um, so it would be a third firing, and you'd want to ask the staff at Broken Clay or wherever you're working at uh, about it, um, if it's if it can be done in the studio, just in terms of um, health health standards, I guess. Uh, but what you do is once it's all gla made, glazed, gone through both those firings, you can then buy some gold or silver or platinum luster, and with the with a careful eye and hand, you can paint on whatever you want. That could be design, it could be this. This, I would say, is, is fairly meticulous, these kind of stripes. Um, but getting that kind of band on the foot and just the top rim are, is pretty easy. And the luster, because it is a heavy metal, is a little expensive, but a little does go a long way. So it can be a really satisfying um, application if anyone's interested. So again, that's it. But again, if you want to ask your teacher or ask a um, friend or look up on YouTube, you working in pieces in clay, uh, collaring, it's also good for making spouts uh, as along with necks of vases. Um, throwing large, there's always a couple good techniques for just working with a lot of clay and luster firings. So thanks for listening.